Hi, this is Luke with UncommonHeritage.com and today we're going to do a barrel planter. We're going to use this barrel. Um, we will be cutting the top off um, inside the ring to leave this ring for the rigidity. Um, take the labels off and around the sides we're going to make 48 pockets that we can put strawberries, hen and chickens, lettuce. It's going to be a vertical garden. Um, the top will be open. We'll actually be able to plant in the top also. What I am thinking about doing is mixing charcoal, otherwise known as biochar, um, and putting it in here in the center column. Mixing it with compost, with dirt, uh, in the middle um, in sort of a vertical column. I may go as high as 30% charcoal, maybe even a little bit higher. But I'm going to mix it before I put it in there, before I plant it, and let the pH adjust, let everything settle in for a day or two, uh, maybe a week or even longer depending. Um, and that will uh, help hold the moisture. Before I do anything, I'm going to go ahead and take these labels off. Uh, you can spray them with WD-40 to loosen up the adhesive. I can't find my WD-40. I'm going to use brake cleaner. After that, then I will go ahead and mark the holes for the pockets, put the pockets in, and then after all the pockets are done, I'm planning to go ahead and do the cut the ring out for the top. But I'm going to wait for the top uh, because I'll be doing a lot of prying and um, cutting and just leaving the top on till last will make it a little bit more rigid. What I have here is an old-fashioned marking gauge. Um, I've drilled holes every five inches. The bottom one is up about five and a half inches from the bottom. And I left this one down enough from where it's thicker up here where the lid is that I'm thinking that I'll be able to open those pockets up like I need to. Um, take my permanent marker, this is a sharpie, put it through the hole. And now, as long as I keep this stick vertical, if I go horizontal um, or at an angle, uh, it will change the height. But as long as I keep this vertical, I have a fancy marking gauge that will give me a nice line all the way around the barrel. It won't be perfect. Here I'm off about a sixteenth. But as long as I hold this vertically and at the same angle, I'm going to be plenty close enough for my needs. Now I've got the top one marked all the way around. I'll go down to the next hole and I can start marking the next line just like that. Now that I have all the lines drawn on here, uh, what I need to do now is lay out where my pockets are going to go. Um, I have the height, but I have to figure out what position they're going to go in and where I need to drill the holes. So what I'm going to do, on both sides of my barrel there's a seam. It's real easy to see right here or I can feel it. My finger, I, I know it won't show up on the video, but as I'm sitting here looking at it, it's, let's see, I can't see it here, but I'll be able to feel it. Okay, it's right, right there. Right here. And if I wanted to, I could put my stick up here and mark a line all the way down. Um, I'm going to leave a few spaces in it, but I'll go ahead and put a pretty good line on it just for the sake of the video. Otherwise, I wouldn't really need to make that big of a line. So, and I've got a, the center marked on here because that's where the seam was on the barrel. I can turn this around, and on this side, I see the seam here, I see it here, I see it here. 
A little bit of shadow here. Okay, I see that there. A little bit of shadow, there it is. And right there. I'll hold this up here, make sure, because it's kind of hard to see. Make sure I'm in line. I'm not exactly, but I'm pretty close. Okay, now I have the middle on both sides of the barrel. Now I need to find, because I'm going to put eight pockets, that'll be four on each side. So I have the two middles. If I can find the center line between these two sides, then all of a sudden all I have to do is locate one more pocket. So what I'm going to do is find the center line measuring between these two. I'll mark it up here, mark it down here. I'll put my stick up here and mark all of the lines. Do the same thing on the other side. Then I'll be able to, if I haven't already just measured and marked it, be able to do the same thing with the distance halfway between these two lines and halfway between these two lines. And then I can decide how wide I want the pockets and how I want to position them. But it will be all marked out for me. I realize there's a neat trick to do this. All I have to do is find one center. I, I did it on the top. And then I can use my carpenter square, my story stick, lay it down flat on the barrel. On my barrel, it'll lay pretty flat. Um, square it up with a workbench. Find uh, the mark. Okay, I've got the mark. And now I can mark them all, all the way down. If I measured them because the barrel changes diameter, um, then I would have to measure each and every one of them, calculate it individually. And this is a lot easier. I've already got it marked. All I've got to do now is go find the next one, repeat exactly the same thing on every on all the odd ones or every other one. When I measure to mark the pockets, I'll have to offset it. And I'll have it marked and ready to go at no time. And I'm heating this in, rotating the pipe so I don't get too much heat too fast in any one spot. This is a vise on my workbench. And I got it hot on that end, put it in the vise about an inch or so, maybe a little more, and clamped down on it while it was hot. Now I'm letting it cool completely before I pull it out. And when I pull it out in a minute, we'll see what it looks like. Alright, I pulled this out of the vise. It's cool now. Um, I'm really happy with the way it looks. On this side, it uh, made a wedge. And you can see how it pulled together. It seemed to melt together somewhat. On this side, it kind of pulled in there, which is fine. Okay, here I made a template. I marked this is the length that I want uh, the holes to be, or I think that I want the holes to be apart. So, and then I mark the middle of it. So I'll put it on this line, mark the middle of it up, and with a black marker I made a line here and a line here where the black marks cross the red, that's where I'll put a hole. It'll be a half inch hole here, a half inch hole here. I'll take a saw, I'll cut between them, and then I'll heat up this area and push my pipe down through it and work it and try to form a pocket. Now on the next row I need it to be offset because I want this pocket to be uh, exactly offset to this one so that this pocket is right, this will be the space between two pockets here. This pocket will fall in the middle of that space but underneath it. So to do that I measure the distance between these two marks and that's 
a little under nine inches in my case. It actually will vary slightly going down the barrel, but not much because it's a little bit wider here than it was up here. Um, I may compensate a bit for it, I may not, but I measured this distance divided by two um, and marked on the, my template that distance. And so I came over from the mark, marked the middle spot between these two lines with a red marker, just put a little dot there, I flip it over, mark a black mark here, a black mark here, now I can put a half inch hole here and a half inch hole here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and do one pocket. Um, I may pick one more towards, just do, go ahead and do one more towards the bottom and give it a try and see what happens because I've never done this before and I don't want to mark all of them, do one pocket and then realize I've got to go back and do them all again in a different spot. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and uh, one pocket, drill the holes, heat it up, uh, use my pipe, uh, three and a half, three inch pipe to deform it, let it cool down and see if I like it. Okay, I have a half inch hole drilled here. The size is not critical. Half inch hole here. And I made a slot between them on the red line, which is somewhat difficult to see here. Um, made a slot between them on the red line. Uh, I'm going to heat up this area. The, the slot I cut with a scroll uh, jigsaw, handheld jigsaw. Any saw would probably work or could be made to work. Um, I could even do that with a handsaw. Um, I'm going to heat up this area a little bit over here but mainly in this area and see how that goes and then I will get this pipe in here with this end um, pull up um, the bottom lip push in the top lip and then force it straight down through uh, and then wait till it cools um, and then pull the pipe out after it cools and that should make a pocket like I need okay here we have the first pocket um, I did have to heat it I, I heated it up I tried to put the pipe in uh, I tried to force it and it just wasn't going to go um, it just wasn't hot enough so I heated it up another minute or two and I heated it up in a broader area also which I'm not sure was entirely necessary but I did and and it went very easily after that. You do have to watch. Um, this does tend to melt together, which will make it a little harder to get your pipe in. Um, but it went in. It's cooling now. It's still pretty hot. Um, it's hard to say how well I like the shape until I pull the pipe out. Um, we'll see about that. Okay, here we have the the pocket uh, opened up. I pulled the pipe out, and you can see that made a nice pocket. The next one will go this distance over. So this is the amount of material. Um, be this this distance on this side of the mark. So this is the amount of material that we'll have between the pockets. Um, didn't come out perfectly even. I after I pushed the pipe in I actually scooted it to one side but it kind of had a tendency to go to one side I don't see how that's a problem I don't see how that will even be noticed um, after there's a plant in it and I like the way this pushed back here um, this is still at somewhat of an angle going down here um, I like it Okay, I've did a pocket with um, a cut that was in a frowny face shape, to use the technical term here, and it did noticeably raise the back compared to, let's say, this one or this one.
Here we've gotten half of this done, half of the pockets cut. Um, at the bottom three rows, have the top three rows yet left to do. You can see how I'm staggering them um, to get more pockets closer together and still keep some strength in the barrel. Um, I wanted to comment on my um, pipe that I use to, to hold these open. I don't think you can see it in the video, but it is starting to deform slightly. So I'm going to have to watch and be careful that I don't get it too hot. Uh, if I had to make another one, I might use a regular uh, Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Um, this is certainly working fine, but I will probably end up having to make another one before I can make a second um, barrel if I decide to do that. Otherwise it would have been fine. And so I'm just being a little bit careful and watching I don't get it too hot, uh, this pipe, so, um, so that it doesn't melt. I've marked a line here about an inch in from the outside rim. And I'm cutting around it with the jigsaw. Here we go. Oh, forgot the glasses. Put this inside rim roughly even with the indentations on the inside. Not that you'll see those when it's full of dirt, but that's where it is. Looking great. What I want now is to put drain holes in the bottom. Now, some of the systems that I've seen, what they have done is cut a hole in the bottom, use maybe an 8 inch um, PVC pipe in the middle and put holes in it um, and use that as a sort of a worm bent. Well, um, if I lived in Florida or some place where it never got below 40 degrees, maybe I would try that. Uh, even then, I'm a little bit concerned that um, the worms, first of all, wouldn't go in the dirt, red worms I'm talking about, I'm thinking about, and secondly, that they really, red worms usually live in just the top two or three inches of mulch. And we're talking about a 30 inch long tube. And that just doesn't seem like a natural habitat for them. But I've not tried it. And I've, um, so I don't want to criticize it. It just doesn't seem like it would be a real effective system. So what I'm going to do is mark a circle here in the middle, put a number of drain holes in it. To put the drain holes, what I'm going to do um, with this unit First of all, instead of putting legs on it, I'm going to buy like um, a decorative brick, like you see for edging. Put probably three of them under it. It'll be up about that high. Uh, um, mark a circle here, and the drain holes will go away from the edge where those decorative brick are going to be. They'll go here in the middle. I'll put, I don't know, we'll see how it marks out, but I'll mark a circle roughly the size of a dinner plate here, eight, ten inch circle. Drill some holes in it. Uh, I'll drill small holes, like a pilot hole almost, eighth inch holes, and maybe three eighths inch, depending on. I'll do less than three eighths. And then um, on the inside, what I'll do is heat. Well, I can heat it from the outside, but I'm going to heat this up, and then from the with my torch, just like I did the outside pockets. On the inside, then I'm going to reach through, uh, like with a metal punch push down on that little hole that I just heated up and it will make, I'm hoping, like a little funnel or a little cone pointing down. That way, when I have this setting on my deck or patio, I can put a pan under here and because there's this little funnel thing where the water drips out, um, that way it won't just kind of run off the edge and come off the edge. And, um, it will be in a controlled area where I can put a pan under that and catch the runoff from that should I wish to do so. Yeah, I went ahead and drilled three sixteenths inch holes here. Um, I got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 
and they're well inside my ring on the around the outer side. I did a, a test here. Um, this is the one I like the best. I used a small pilot hole. I marked all of. I laid out all the lines with the sharpie. Now I can't get the sharpie off. All right, we finished our barrel planter. This is. Um, like I was saying, I tried painting over these lines with a plastic, um, a pl uh, pe white paint for plastic. It did not cover them. In fact, I think it made them stand out more. Um, that's all for today. All we have to do now is fill it with soil, um, preferably something that's very absorbent, and plant in it, and shortly we can be enjoying a good harvest.